Lining up. Coming into line. They're under started orders. They're off. He's let him go for the Martel Grand National. No retreat was very reluctant to jump away. He's lost about 10 lengths in the early stages. Showing up well is Esprit de Cotte. Edmund very well away as well in the Martel Grand National. In behind these moral support remaining very handy. Papillon's one of the early leaders. Khaki Crazy and Bo are also very well away towards the outside of the field as they cross the Melling Road. In behind these, Mr. One. Mundiga's not far away. Edmund's the leader though with those bright orange sleeves. The first of 30 fences coming up. And Edmund comes towards the first fence. He's over it safely from Unsinkable Boxer in second place towards his outside as they head on down towards number two. Exit swinger towards the back of the field. Spanish Main is a faller at the first. Spanish Main down at fence number one, so is Art Prince. Edmund was the leader at the second. Hannah Cam has gone there. And also at the back of the field, coming down at the first fence to the second fence to Sword of Mai and Addington Boy are both gone. But it's uh, Esprit de Cotte, Merry People, Unsinkable Box from Edmund as they come over the third fence, the big ditch. Paddy's return is down. Holy Bank Buck is a faller as well. They head on towards number four. Edmund from Esprit de Cotte, Merry People, towards the outside. Bow and Blowing Wind, Amberley House and Smarty. Then comes the last fling. Uh, Earth Movers unseated the rider at fence number four. Another one went towards the inside as well. They continue on down towards Beach as Edmund, Bow, and with these Esprit de Cotte and Merry People in front as they head now over the one before beaches. Ennis Cara seems to have gone as well towards the back of the field then as they head down towards uh, Beaches Brook and as they do so, Esprit de Cot, bow up on the outside. Edmund is next with Merry People and Blowing Wind. These are then being followed by Papillon on the inside of runners as they head now towards Beaches Brook and bow the leader at it. He touches down safely. All the leaders going safely over Beaches Brook as they now take it and head round towards Foynaven. Uh, uh, further back looked like Northern Starlight could have gone at Beaches. Uh, his jockey's up on his feet okay. Meanwhile, the Foynaven fence is taken and Merry Peoples out the side door there. He was in third place at the time. A dreadful blunder from him. He's out of the contest. Now they head towards the canal turn and Carl Llewellyn, a great Grand National record, leads on Bow by two lengths to Edmund. Blowing wind, all three travelling very wide and now cutting in. Brave Highlander is next in the field. After these, Amberley House was taken out by a loose horse. Oh, there's a pile up at the canal turn there. Lots of them coming to grief there, but Bo is left clear of the field as they head now towards Ballantines. Edmund's up on the outside. Blowing wind is next. Smarty getting a bit closer now. Unsinkable boxer is next. Mr. One is a faller at Ballantines Brook as well. And now they head towards the next plane fence. Bo and Edmund, the leaders. And Bo and Edmund together, the last fling was a faller earlier in the race as well, blowing wind over that in third position towards the inside, unsinkable boxer next in the field as they head down towards the next one. And the orange sleeve jacket of Edmund and Bo, these two, the front two in the Martel National as they head uh, over the next plane fence behind those uh, towards the inside is blowing wind. The field trailing over it now, Supreme Charm is just about the back marker as they head on towards fence number 12 and the run back towards the home straight the first time Edmund still in front. Esprit de Cotte's another faller earlier in the race. He's out of the contest. Uh, there aren't too many more going then as they head towards the race course proper for the second time. Still well over a circuit to go. Edmund is now the leader in the Martel Grand National. He leads by two lengths to Bow in second place. Blowing Wind and Smarty are next. Papillon is next in the field, followed by Noble Lord. These in turn are followed by Unsinkable Boxer. Listen, Timmy and Moondiga still going pretty well, as is Red Marauder. And behind Red Marauder is Brown. Brave Highlander, Supreme Charm is still going after these, but not a lot le else left in the Martel Grand National as they now head towards the 13th fence. And Edmund, the leader by four lengths here, to Bow in second place. Smarty is next in the field in third place. He's traveling really strongly. Papillon likewise, blowing wind towards the inside of the field. And now they come in towards the wings of the 13th fence. This will take them towards the next. And then, of course, the chair is number 15. It's Edmund, the leader, with those bright orange sleeves. He clapped Outed it though, a bad mistake. Further back, Noble Lord is a faller. Noble Lord falls at the 13th. He and the jockey seem to be none the worse as they now head down towards the 14th fence. Only a handful still going in the Martel Grand National. It's Edmund with Bow alongside. Smarty jumped towards the lead as well. These three lead from Blowing Wind in fourth place. In fifth is Papillon, Red Marauder in sixth place, then Brave Highlander seven, Unsinkable Boxer in eighth, then is Moondiga in ninth. 
ninth place. There's a gap after these to listen, Timmy. Supreme Charm. Clearly, Mealy Moss is out of the race as well. He probably went in the melee earlier. Edmund's a faller at the chair. Mundiga also is out of it as well. Listen, Timmy almost went. Supreme Charm has gone. Listen, Timmy's going to be pulled up after that mistake. So now they head towards the water jump. It's now Bow in front from Smarty in second. Blowing Wind in third. Red Marauder is in fourth place. Papillon in fifth. Unsinkable Boxer in sixth. In seventh place is Brave Highlander. And these are the only seven still going in the Martel Grand National. No retreats been pulled up way at the back of the field. And now they turn left-handed and head out into their final circuit. It's Carl Llewellyn on Bow who leads from Smarty in second place. Blowing Wind and Red Marauder three and four. In behind these, Papillon, Brave Highlander and Unsinkable Boxer. The loose horses are everywhere as they now head over the Melling Road and out into the country for the final time. Bow leading here. Smarty, Red Marauder, Blowing Wind, Brave Highlander, Papillon, Unsinkable Boxer, the only seven left going. And they head down now towards the 17th fence with Bow towards the center of the track, just about in front as he comes over it. Now Smarty is wider of him, then Red Marauder towards the inside. Further back is Brave Highlander as they head on towards another plain fence. Blowing wind still well there towards the leaders up on the outside. As they come to this plain one, Bow is over it safely in front from Blowing Wind in second. Smarty in third position, Red Marauder next, and then comes Brave Highlander and Papillon. And well behind these unsinkable boxers. as they come to the 19th the big ditch some of the loose horses running across but and uh, blowing wind has uh, unseated the rider Papillon and uh, Brave Highlander refused as well so and unsinkable box has been uh, pulled up before that so there are only three left three go down towards the next plane fence Bow, Red Marauder and Smarty and Bow has gone Bow is a faller there so it's Red Marauder and Smarty they are the only two horses left in this year's Martel Grand National they head down now with uh, the one fence before Beecher's Brook to take Smarty towards the outside of the red jacket of Red Marauder. And Red Marauder's over that just in front by about a length to Smarty as they head down towards Beecher's Brook. So they race towards Beaches, an unbelievable race here. Lance Armstrong is still going, but he's about six fences behind. Andrew Thornton must have got back on board him, but now a duel, would you believe it, at Beaches for the final time. It's Red Marauder with a two-length advantage over Smarty. Red Marauder, he's over safely. Smarty over safely as well. The gap between them is four lengths. These two in a most incredible race. Head now towards Foynaven for the final time. Richard Guest on Red Marauder. A four-length leader over Smarty in second place. They're over Foynaven, these two. Six or seven fences behind is Lance Armstrong. Don't forget, I think he's still going now. Uh, a few have remounted. Blowing Wind has remounted. I think Papillon might have remounted. But all these are a long, long way behind as they now come towards the canal turn. And it's Red Marauder. Loose horse again getting in the way. Red Marauder stuttered over that. He almost put the brakes on. Smarty over safely then as they come now to towards Valentine's for the final time. It's still Red Marauder and Smarty. Red Marauder, he's up and over safely from Smarty. There may only be two left in it, but there's nothing to choose between them as they head down the side of the track for home. So the race uh, itself between Red Marauder and Smarty, but both Blowing Wind and Papillon are continuing. They're currently on their way down towards uh, Beecher's Brook, and uh, those two racing out third and fourth places. But for the big prize of the Martel Grand National, Red Marauder and Smarty are level with each other, keeping each other company as they make this long journey back towards home at the uh, next fence there. And uh, Smarty has moved on by a couple of lengths now to Red Marauder, further back in the field, uh, Blowing Wind and Papillon are approaching the Foynaven fence, but as the leaders head back towards home, Red Marauder and Smarty, the two who will fight out the finish. It's Smarty who's gone about four lengths clear then as they race towards the racetrack proper now with just a couple of fences left to take in the Martel Grand National Handicap Chase. This is Mark Pittman's first runner in the race, Smarty. He's got a lead of about four lengths over Richard Guest and Red Marauder in second place. Richard Guest was runner-up in this race in 1992 on Romany King and he's not out of it by any means. The two of them are hunting round towards the second last then. Don't forget those two about five fences behind. Uh, blowing wind 
friend and Papillon still going for place money at the moment. Lance Armstrong maybe as well, but now Red Marauder has poached a lead on Smarty. He races down towards the second last. Red Marauder about five lengths clear of Smarty. I wonder if Timmy Murphy can conjure anything out of Smarty now as Red Marauder, who was a faller at Beaches earlier on, is the leader here and going about 10 lengths clear. Uh, Red Marauder, a former, he was a faller at Beaches in another year, but Red Marauder into the second last. He's a tired horse, but he's over safely there. His lead is about 15 lengths over Smarty in second place. Blowing winds in third away behind. Papillon still going as well, but now the final fence. Red Marauder is clear in the Martel Grand National. The last, he's up and over safely. Red Marauder, he's getting a great cheer. What a moment this is for owner trainer Norman Mason and Richard Guest. They're now about 30 lengths clear. Smarty has got over the last as well. He's run a fabulous race in second place, but he's clearly got no more to give. The other two aren't even in sight. Papillon and Blowing Wind hunting round for third place honours only, but well inside the final furlong, it is Red Marauder who is going to win a most astonishing Martel Grand National. A first success in the race will be Richard Guest, second in 92. How he will relish this moment, the final few yards, and Red Marauder is the winner of the Martel Grand National. Smarty has virtually stopped to a walk, but he will get a mighty cheer in second place.